In this video, we're going to be talking about the comparisons of the cost of living if you're uh, American, Canadian, or European, and if you are interested to basically relocate or you're considering relocating to the East, then this video is for you. Uh, we, you know, I've, I've had, uh, you know, a decent amount of time. I've spent it in Dubai. I've spent it in, you know, moving around in Thailand as well, Malaysia, Bali. And uh, so this has given, you know, me the opportunity to live in these places, experience the life, the culture, the lifestyle, and obviously finances as well. So what I want to do is to educate the audience today as to, you know what, if they were to move to any of these cities, what could they possibly expect and what kind of stuff should basically they be looking for? So, you know what, let's start with number one. We're going to talk about Dubai. The thing about Dubai is, you know what, the, you know, most people, they say that, hey, the cost of living in Dubai is really unaffordable. And you know what, I tend to disagree with this notion that, you know what, it's completely up to you. There are different districts in Dubai. For example, if you go to Dubai Marina or if you go to JBR or, you know what, even near Burj Khalifa, of course, those are meant more uh, for, you know, what, tourist people coming in or, you know, there's, a, you, you, there, there's always a influx of people that are coming in and out of Dubai. So usually they're the short term people that are staying there. You could live there, but you're obviously your cost of living is going to be higher as opposed to if you were maybe to live a little bit out, maybe, you know, onto the east side of Dubai or towards the north near to Sharjah. And to be honest, uh, these cities, what it is that, you know, the like UAE as a whole is pretty small. So when I was living there, I had a car, you know what, what you want to do, metro is cheap. But if you can drive, that probably is the better, of, the better, of, better option because ultimately you'll save a whole lot of money in terms of transportation costs, in terms of taxi, because they are quite expensive. They do add up. So, and you know, if, if, as long as you have a car and if you're living out in Sharjah, it's about a half an hour drive to Dubai. Or if you're living in Abu Dhabi, then again, it's in about another 40 minutes to 15 minute drive, which is not so bad in terms of commute as well. And people just take the Sheikh Zayed Road uh, all the way from, from Sharjah all the way to Dubai and Dubai all the way down to um, you know, Abu Dhabi. So basically, as long as you're staying in one of these places, you can still, you know what, uh, your cost of living, number one, you can easily get, you know, um, decent affordable accommodation, uh, I would say in Canadian dollars, anywhere starting from $1,500 to maybe two or 3000 depending on what your needs are. And a car rental basically is going to cost you anywhere from, depending on if you're getting a small size car to mid size. This could basically vary depending on the rental car company. And you know what? I'll try to link, leave some links in the description box below if you're looking to rent a car and looking for good deals. So anywhere from three hundred dollars upwards to maybe seven, eight hundred dollars is usually the, the the means. So and then give and take, you know what? Then it comes down to your groceries and cost of living. Then that's completely up to you. If you're a party goer, then of course you know what you're going to end up spending a lot of money. So that might not be a good option, like for you in that regards, because Dubai can really creep up on you and it can really you know add up now let's talk about uh, one of the cons of living in dubai the problem with living in dubai it's a great city it's very vibrant like a lot of times what happens is that um, you know you see a lot of rich people driving like really expensive cars and you know really like you know having fun so it's you you can potentially have the tendency to get caught up in that mindset and it's it, like what i said here the emphasis on the word is mindset so when you see that you basically start to flock the same feathers and a lot of times i've seen it before people will come there literally you know on a budget and next thing you see they're just there you know what spending really frivolously and literally before you know it they say hey you know what dubai is not for us because dubai is too expensive and then they usually have to leave so that really brings me to the to my um, to my next city, which well to my next country, that would be Thailand. So I did uh, manage. Like right now, I'm currently making this video in Bangkok. I'm living here, long term, and then um, I've also um, lived in Phuket as well. So from here, Phuket is relatively the cheaper of the two cities. Obviously, one is you know you get the beaches and the the jungles in Phuket, and Bangkok is a more metropolitan city. Bangkok is relatively I would say a little bit, people don't expect this, but it is relatively expensive. Thailand overall is cheap, but depending on your accommodation, where you're staying, uh, give and take, you know what, you potentially would be spending anywhere from 
uh, $800, $700 starting to maybe, you know, $2,000 up to or something along those lines for shorter term like Airbnbs to stay in a decent, um, you know, apartment, maybe two bedrooms or something like that. And then uh, MRT is what people usually take. And grab, the traffic here is beyond terrible. So this is one of the cons of Bangkok. And then relatively one of the good points of this place is relatively weather is hot all 12 months. And then you have to worry about just the monsoon season that usually starts up. You know, people have different views on this because it's, 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 it's a pretty, um, you know, it uh, starts off as a little bit inconsistent in the beginning. And then it really, it's like it rains a lot you, uh, around the summer months and stuff like that. So I would say probably around May, May, June, July, I would say that's when the rainy season would probably start. And then it just comes all the way down to maybe like, I would say, October, November, November end, something along those lines. So that's one of the, you know, the, the, the drawbacks. But other than that, you know what, if you, if you go out there, uh, the, the sales tax is relatively low on top of it. Cost of living is not so bad in the sense that if you were to go eat outside, you know, unless you're doing like really fine dining, Bangkok caters to the middle class and the ultra rich. There's a lot of, you know, Asians here, I guess, from um, China as well. So there's a lot of like rolling of money that's in the economy and people, uh, you know what, once again, you know, you have like a range of people that are, you know, the ultra rich. And then you have, you know, the middle class. And then obviously there's a big, you know, um, disparity between the poor and the rich. So... There's a lot of like, you know, poverty here as well. But relatively, what you need to know is Bangkok is a very safe city. And you know what? I did manage to, like, well, I was managed to. One of those days I was just, you know, walking around and I got lost. And then I ended up walking through, you know, like a, like a, like a poor neighborhood. And I'm just going to play a little clip while as I'm speaking here just so we can kind of get an understanding of, you know, on one side you have the mega rich people living in, you know, buildings and drive. You see a lot of high-end cars and hotels and, you know, I guess... Uh, infrastructure is literally you can you cannot tell if you're in Europe or North America or or um, in or in Asia and you know what you would be very surprised that a lot of the infrastructure I think it's better than Canada and America because it's newer the amenities are, are better like uh, so you get that value here as opposed to paying premium you know dollars for maybe you know an apartment out in New York so with that being said, you know what, uh, when I got lost in, like, in, in that, um, in those, in, I wouldn't call it a neighborhood, like, you know, that, that, um, that street, people were super friendly, they were helpful, they came up to me, they, they you know, they were guiding me, and, at one, and when I was coming back, it was late at night. So both times, it was literally, you know, I, I thought at the back of my head, you know what, is an incident waiting to happen here? But relatively, like, you know what, the city is safe. And people here, they're, they are very, very nice. Thai people are very good people. So that is a plus for Thailand. As far as Phuket is concerned, Phuket obviously is not as densely packed as uh, Bangkok. And you know what, usually people, they'll rent like a, a scooter or they'll rent like maybe a car. And overall accommodation, once again, if you're depending on where you're living, which part uh, of Phuket you're living in, then you know what, you can potentially end up paying anywhere from, you know, five, six hundred dollars to maybe, you know, eight hundred thousand dollars for accommodation. And if you want something nice, like uh, like a like a nice villa, you could probably maybe even get one for two thousand dollars. This is that would be I would consider that a little bit more like in the off season. And then once the uh, the actual the hot season like starts for places like Phuket because it rains a lot there. It usually starts, I would say, December. That's when a lot of tourists are coming in from Australia, from New Zealand, from Europe, from Canada, America. So that's when usually, you know what, people, unless you've been living there longer term, so usually when people come to Thailand and East Asia, they do have a tendency to live here longer term as opposed to just come here for a quick vac vacation and then leave. But usually you do see that crowd as well. So if you have been living or if you plan on living there, then you can definitely, you know what, get a better deal. And once again, I'm going to leave some links in the description for you to maybe check out some affordable, um, you know, accommodation or airplane tickets or, you know, um, I guess rental cars and such or bikes. So or if you want to book an excursion. So that's something that is good about, uh, you know, Thailand. Uh, overall, you know, 
Now let's talk about Malaysia. Malaysia is a destination that I've been coming to for many years and it continues to surprise me because people, they don't really talk about this destination as much as they should. It's not like really in your highlight. And you know what, uh, with, um, I made a video earlier, I'll try to link it down in the description box, uh, where I was you know, staying in Malaysia and I made, a, I made a couple of vlogs from there. Malaysia, I think, is even cheaper than Thailand in, in, in some ways because the value that you get, first of all, super clean. It's not densely packed. The, the, I'm talking about Kuala Lumpur here. That's where I was living in. And the thing about Kuala Lumpur is their water supply is clean. That means if you were to drink that water, even if you were eating from the streets, the likelihood of you getting sick is relatively low, number one. Number two, food is super delicious and is very cheap. Uh, and then on top of it, your overall cost when I was taking, and in this region of the world, you don't take Ubers, or well, they have the Uber equivalent, it's just, which is called Grab. Grab is huge here, so you'll basically need to make a Grab account. And you know what? Uh, if you guys request a video on you know how to make a, a grab account I can potentially just make one for you guys so you guys can see as to it's, it's uh, relatively easy so basically when you're taking grabs from one one place to another it usually is like three dollars four dollars two dollars so it's relatively not that expensive to basically move around from uh, one part of the city to the other half one of the cons are like it's a little bit quieter like you know so I guess maybe that's a pro for some maybe it's a con for some depending if but then you know what like if you're if you want to go go to one of the you know um, better spots or there's like the you know that you could go to you know on weekends as well or like expensive dinner and dates you're probably looking to spend maybe between 50 60 70 dollars which is not too bad so overall I would rate uh, Thai, uh, Malaysia pretty high up on that list for then you know what with with relatively low cons very safe, super friendly, and very cheap. So that is a city that one should consider if you guys are planning of moving from west to the east, or even if you guys are planning on coming for longer term or even short term, definitely check it out. It probably will surprise you in a lot of ways. Uh, when you check out some of the malls such as Surya, KLCC Mall, there's the Pavilion, and there's so many of them. They are better then you know what you see out in like Canada, America, you will be very surprised. Uh, the next destination is Bali. Bali, for me, I had mixed feelings. I like Bali. Bali was not a bad spot. I noticed one thing, either people really, really liked it or they did not like it so much. One of the, I'm gonna start with some of the cons first and then we'll get to the pros for this one. One of the cons is it's quite congested. And if you're claustrophobic or if you're someone that doesn't like to be in tight places, and believe it or not, there actually are people like that, that I, even I know, that developed higher anxiety by being in these places because they were quite, like, you know, if you're staying in Bali, like mo a lot of the tourists, they'll either stay in Kuta or they'll go to Chenggu. Those are one of the two, you know, hot spots. I mean, Bali is relatively all like that. A little bit quieter would be Ubud, but Ubud is about one hour drive. So I was always driving one hour from Ubud to Chenggu and the, 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 the Katu um, uh, area and then driving back, which was another hour. So I was always driving, getting stuck in traffic and the roads are super narrow. And everybody has a, has a scooter there and I feel like traffic is really bad. In Thailand, even though traffic is bad, but people, you will not see them honking at you or you, they're not gonna try to step on you in any way or they're not gonna create problems with you. But in Bali, they're more aggressive. You really have to watch yourself. There is street crime there. My, two of my friends, they came from Canada and then they were basically sitting on, uh, on a scooter and they were on their way. They were going somewhere. And uh, this was at nighttime and one of my friends was you know, sitting behind and he had his phone, literally he was holding it like this and some guy just came in and literally snatched the phone from his hand and off he went and again they tried to chase him but they were they because these guys are pros there are signs everywhere that hey please keep your belongings safe and on top of it watch for these phone snatchers and stuff like that so there is a lot of scam and um, you know these type of incidents is happening the likelihood of that happening in bali is relatively high so you have to be really careful now let's talk about the pros about bali bali is is cheap 
but accommodation I found it to be expensive in Bali that you know what I found myself that I was spending a lot of money in Bali shopping was also expensive too like I needed like you know clothes or different items because it's an island and you know what over there I had to buy a, an iPhone um, you know they, we like uh, we bought an iPhone 14 Pro Max and you know what we paid an extra thousand dollars just to buy that phone in Bali because we needed that so that just gets to show you the actual price differences in Bali and even flights you know what this is another one this is this is actually um, um, a little advice that's gonna help you save a lot of money that you know what if you fly directly into Bali you know because the flights fares are quite high so the best way to do to fly into Bali is via well there's there's no such thing as like oh, this is the best way but one of the better approaches either is to fly in from like Bangkok or maybe Thailand or Malaysia that's where you're gonna find affordable tickets and especially if you're flying uh, international flights you can save a lot of money by you know what using a transit flight along the way to you're gonna have a transit flight to begin with anyways either to Singapore or Hong Kong or Tokyo or whatever or Thailand or Malaysia so what you want to do is that's just a little um, hack that I just wanted to put out there so with that being said the pros are it's it's gorgeous um, Bali is there's a lot of digital nomads and people living there uh, the party culture is very out there like I mean there's a lot of single people there they're just all what they want to do is just you know work and party so that if you are in that frame of mind then I guess that would be a place but you know I don't really you know encourage it like you know if you're just there if you're if you're trying to live longer term then the whole purpose and idea idea behind ideology behind this is that you're trying to you know come here work on yourself as a person because you know grow as a person make money and you know what put yourself in a better position that hey you know what some people they might just stay there longer term but if you're not but a lot of people they're not going to live there forever so the whole idea is not for you to come there blow a whole bunch of money waste a lot of time and the next thing you see you're just leaving Ubud is relatively cheaper than these other areas relatively and it's not as congested or crowded as Chenggu or you know um, some of the other areas over there uh, but the and the you know and over there the 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 um, the landscape is simply gorgeous, like the rice terraces, or if you want to go like maybe up to Mount Batur, or if you want to just sort of move around, but just be consistent in one spot, then Bali might be the spot for you. But keep one thing in mind, like well, I was exchanging even $100, their currency is the increments when you first land, they're, 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 they're incredibly high. Like for example, if you just go out there to buy, for example, milk or like maybe a couple of items, you're gonna pay 100,000, just like that. And you're thinking, oh my God, am I paying a lot? But technically, it's not a lot. It's just the the, the currency conversions. Just you know, be be a little bit mindful. People they have a tendency to get confused when they first get there. Eventually, they pick it up. They get the hang of it. And uh, the rainy season, the the rainy season, monsoon season in Bali goes up to end of January. So just keep that in mind. If you know what. It does, and in those seasons, it does rain a lot. So you know what? Uh, if you are planning a trip over there, so keep these points, you know, at the back of your head because when you plan and you make a move, you you don't want to just keep moving around in a suitcase unless you just backpacking is your passion and that's what you want to do. Most people they like to they like to come on longer stays, and what they want to do, they just want to basically be stable in one place at least for. A little bit of time so they can just you know get comfortable and you know work and you know whatever else that they're looking to do right and then after that what happens you know they usually you, they, they, they relocate or they move from one spot but you know what so keep these points at the back of your head so you know what the last part of this video is I'm going to basically name you my top pick of if I had to choose between one of these destinations which one would it be and why so with that being said uh, you know what that really does come down to opinion and to be honest for me just to pick one destination wouldn't just you know be fair because they all comes with their pros and cons but even if someone my audience was to push me and you know and tell me to pick one spot I would say it would have to be either Phuket or Kuala Lumpur uh, and between these two destinations if I really have to choose one place I would choose Kuala Lumpur and the reason why I would choose Kuala Lumpur is that it's a metropolitan city you don't feel like you are like you know 
um, it's cheap, and the main point, the main purpose is once you're leaving, because we've been accustomed to living life in the West a certain way. Like you know, we want our amenities. You know, we want a good road system. Like, we don't want like you know terrible traffic, and at the same time too, like you know what when we you know the amenities have to you know we we we, we want them to be at a specific level. So with that being said. Kuala Lumpur and you know for example like America or Canada if you're coming from these places you are going to see if you take a jump from here your your jump you're going to land literally right here and it's going to be at the same level if not better I think living standard in Kuala Lumpur is higher definitely 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 higher comparison to you know what Canada and America because what's going on is that since coronavirus too there's been a lot of like you know like cutbacks on you know, uh, on, on, on infrastructure projects, roads are broken, healthcare system is not the greatest anymore, and the promise of a better life, it's become so unaffordable that it's not even worth it for most people to live there. So I highly advise that you guys take travel insurance and come here because life does happen, you never know. And if it does, then you can go to a good hospital, God forbid, if, if there's ever a need arises too. And you know what? You would love this journey called life and you know what, what life and the promise unfortunately used to be of living in the West, you can still feel that in the East. So with that, um, you know what, we're, we're approaching the end of this video. I'm going to make uh, some more follow videos where, you know what, I'm just going to dive a little bit into more details as to, you know what, more tips and tricks on how to save money and, you know, how to maneuver and things to watch out for, for Canadians and Americans and Europeans. So, you know what, don't forget to like and subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you guys. Bye.